the new Freetown Police Station, built on a proud past with a solid plan for the future. For more than one year now, the Freetown Police Station Building Subcommittee has been working with architects, engineers, and other professionals, developing the design for a new police station that will serve the Freetown population for the next 50 years and beyond. This presentation will summarize the process of this effort and what we need to do as a community to turn this project into a finished building that we can all be proud of. The topics reviewed in this presentation will be the need for the new police station, the condition of the existing station and why it should not be renovated, the spaces and the established program for the new police station, the site of the new police station, the appearance and construction details of the new police station, the size of the new police station, and the comparison with stations in other surrounding communities. And lastly, the cost of the new police station. While the need for law enforcement personnel is greater than ever, the facility that our officers currently work in is out of date and grossly undersized. Our current police station was designed and built in the late 1970s and is a one-story, 3,000 square foot structure with concrete block walls and a wood truss roof. It is grossly undersized by today's standards and contains design flaws that have affected its occupants since it was first opened. Due to the lack of space, rooms are being used for purposes and functions that they were not designed for. This is creating an unsafe environment for both the police staff and the detainees. For example, the break room is currently used for many functions. Not only is it a dining area for the offices, it is also used for training, weapons cleaning, evidence processing, report writing, roll call, and conferences. There is also only one interview room with improper sound isolation and recording equipment. The existing station also suffers from a lack of locker and toilet rooms. Currently, there is only one locker room and two toilet rooms, none of which are designated as female. Due to lack of space, the current locker room is also used for storage. This renders many functions, such as the shower, unusable. The lack of office space means that the detectives and lieutenants must share an office that was originally designed for one occupant. There is literally no planned storage space inside the existing building. There is inadequate room to store weapons, ammunition, evidence, paper file storage, and administrative supplies. Much of the storage is done outside in trailers and garages, and many of the evidence storage areas suffers from lack of ventilation. One area that is adversely affected by the lack of storage space is the attic. The attic was not designed for storage and is currently being used for that purpose, creating an unsafe space and affecting the mechanicals that it was originally designed to house. The booking and detention areas are riddled with safety hazards and current code violations. The detainee processing chair is not fastened to the floor because the space must also be used for mug shots. There are no spit guards in the counter areas and there are windows that look directly into the booking area. There is an inadequate communication system and no sally port which to safely bring the detainees in. A list of suicide hazard in the existing cell block have been identified by the Mass Department of Public Health. These conditions may serve as an anchor point in the commission of a detainee suicide. The toilet fixtures are not equipped with anti-suicide skirts. Holes in the benches of both cells are dangerous. Bed supports are exposed. There are slits in the spouts of the sinks in the cells. There are gaps between the benches and the wall in the cells. Ventilation grills are exposed within the cells and food slots are accessible in both cells. After careful analysis, the design team eliminated the idea of renovations and additions to the existing station for the following reasons. The existing exterior walls are built of concrete block filled with vermiculite insulation in its cores. This situation is made worse by the fact that wet, moist earth is bermed against the side of these block walls by design. This, in effect, puts most of the building beneath grade. 
water actually leaks through the walls at different times of the year. The current roof line and ceiling heights are not conducive to adding new mechanical services. Existing windows have broken seals and weather stripping. The geometry of the plan is linear and does not lend itself well to additions. The building is not conducive to running new plumbing waste lines under the existing slab on grade because there is no basement or crawl space. Any new lines would require cutting the slab and trenching underneath the building. The building is not equipped with a fire service line, a cistern storage system, interior sprinklers, and a proper smoke detection system. The building is not conducive to adding a second story. Also, not renovating the existing building means that it can remain operational during the construction of the new station. And the town will not have to pay for any temporary services. The building is also adversely affected by outdated structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. The existing communication and radio system is also outdated and undersized. The new design began by establishing needed spaces based on a rigorous space needs assessment with data collected via a 50-page questionnaire completed by the Freetown Police Department. Using the needs assessment information and information gathered in meetings with the police chief and the building subcommittee and professional consultants, a program was developed. This program is based on actual current needs and realistic projections into the future. This program is not simply copied from a similar building in a neighboring town. This program has been custom designed for Freetown's specific needs today and 50 years into the future. With rising construction costs, we want to be sure that the taxpayers will not have to pay for expansion anytime soon. The new police station has been designed specifically for a site that is located at the corner of Memorial Drive and Chase Road, directly across the street from Memorial Park. The pros to the site are, it is town-owned land and it is adjacent to the existing police station. It is also adjacent to the existing elementary school. It is centrally located with reasonable emergency response times. It is a compatible land use within our community and has reasonable traffic conditions in the area. The cons are as follows. There are many large boulders. These will be expensive to move and dispose of. The land slopes upward from Chase Road and will require large retaining walls. There are no public utilities in the street and no natural gas. Our design has been carefully laid out to take advantage of the proposed site. The key to the site planning is the attic concept. Because the site slopes upward from Chase Road, we have developed a design that takes advantage of pedestrian and vehicular access on two levels, the ground level and what we call the attic level. The ground level houses the majority of the program functions, while the upper level contains the auxiliary slash service spaces with copious room for future expansion. Future expansion will take place in the attic level without having to extend the footprint. And the attic areas also afford the opportunity to store all of the archived police documents on site. This use of the attic space is efficient and will save money in the future. Although an elevator is not being installed as part of this original build out, the floor plan, foundation, and structure are being designed to accommodate one in the future. The long slope gable roof has been oriented and structurally designed to accommodate photovoltaic solar panels in the future. The corner lot has allowed us to completely separate public traffic from police personnel traffic. The public will enter from Memorial Drive while the cruises and other personnel will access the site from Chase Road. The flagpole and planting area will have a direct pedestrian link to Memorial Park, an existing landmark that our community is very proud of. An important feature of the new police station is the 70 person training and emergency operations center that will also function as a community meeting room. This new meeting room will not only serve police functions, it will also be utilized as a large meeting space for all of Freetown's boards and committees. Currently, no such room exists within our community. The new Freetown police station is designed for longevity and low maintenance.
The building will consist of rain screen construction. This will allow the building materials to always dry out if any water is driven behind the siding. The airspace behind the cladding will also equalize the wind pressures and make it impossible for water to be driven into the walls of the building. There will also be continuous insulation over the entire exterior of the building. This minimizes thermal breaks. Large roof overhangs will protect the building and its windows from the sun's destructive ultraviolet rays and precipitation. The sally port and detention areas will be constructed with concrete block walls and concrete plank ceilings, resulting in a solid, secure environment. The building will be constructed with fiber cement clapboard siding and brick pilasters with cast stone bases and capitals. This will give the building a monumental appearance which is fitting for a police station that serves the public. Another aspect of this project is the construction of a new communications tower that is approximately 180 feet tall. The existing 1970s era radio tower is not of sufficient height to overcome the topography separating the police station from the Assonant side of town. Consequently, Police, fire, and EMS radio communications to and from a sonnet are poor to non-existent. The proposed tower, together with the implementation of recommendations made in a radio study, will improve the ability of these first responders to communicate more effectively, including life-saving information. The size of the new Freetown police station. The design of the ground level contains 13,225 square feet of finished program space. The attic level design contains 4,072 square feet of finished program space. Altogether, the total finished program space is 17,297 square feet. The attic concept adds another 8,695 square feet for future expansion and storage. This brings the building to a total of 25,992 gross square feet. The proposed Freetown Police Station design consists of 17,297 square feet of finished area. The average new or newly renovated police station in surrounding communities is 17,044 square feet. This 17,297 square feet does not include the unfinished areas in the attic that can be used for storage and future expansion. 3,586 square feet of this unfinished space is full height and will be suitable for any kind of expansion in the future. The estimated total project cost is based on two independent cost estimates performed during the construction document phase. This estimated total project costs contains both the hard and the soft cost. The hard costs being the direct construction costs and the soft costs being the design, project management, and some of the other costs such as the communication tower and furniture. The total project cost for the new Freetown Police Station is $12,378,602 and 30 cents. From this total project cost are certain offsets. There is an offset from overlay surplus of $1,500,000. There is an offset from free cash of $1,378,602.30. And there is also an offset from capital stabilization of $3 million. This brings the estimated total to finance to $6,500,000. Using the number of $6,500,000 as the amount to be financed, the average cost to taxpayers is as follows. Using the average assessed home value in Freetown of $309,059, the tax rate increase would be $0.31 cents per $1,000. This is an average over 20 years.
using this average of 31 cents per $1,000, the first year, the average taxpayer would pay $121.84. This was decreased until in the final year, 20 years later, that same taxpayer would be paying $70.40. This brings a 20-year average to $96.12 per year. These tax increases are based on two independent cost estimates performed during the construction document phase. The project is currently out to bid, and we will have hard numbers towards the end of October. Freetown is in need of a new police station and community meeting space. The hard work of the Freetown Police Station Building Subcommittee over the past two years has resulted in a shovel-ready building project that will solve both of these needs. Your yes vote will assure that our community will gain a public building that we can all be proud of and will serve Freetown both now and for generations to come. <music>